Welcome, welcome, on, peeps. Hope everyone is good. Hope everyone's enjoying. It's actually been recorded on a Monday. Um, it's probably a bit of a different type of video, really. Um, I thought it'd be really good. Uh, and it's actually just been prompted um, just by um, a video that I uploaded at the weekend. Um, just in regards to things like my Patreon and... Um, and I guess like some people feeling a bit disappointed because like my full reaction wasn't on YouTube yet, it was on Patreon and, and stuff. And I'd, I'd been thinking about doing this kind of video for a little while anyway, um, because I think it's really important to, you know, I always think it's really important to be quite transparent. The whole reason I do a reaction channel is because if you know me, you know that what you see from me is 100% just authentic. <laughs> so I can't really hide much i wouldn't be very good at poker i don't know how to play poker well i do not play poker but i don't play very often um but what you get from me is literally what you see like it, it just is and i think with youtube i think there's probably a lot of like not misconceptions but i think even when i started doing my channel i was a bit like mm, i don't know if i fully get everything here and if i'm honest i don't know if i still really do get everything about it but um obviously i get it enough to know that you know, I've got a channel, I've got a space. Um, and I thought it'd be really cool to kind of, I guess, just explain a little bit as to what this, it's been this year, this April will be two years I've had my channel. Um, and I don't know if, if everybody knows this, but I actually walked away from my job um, in December of last year. So December 2020, 2023, um, I decided that, do you know what? I'm going to do my channel full time. And I kind of want to take people through that journey of what that looks like and and I guess you know what I'm doing um because I think again it can well I don't know but when I speak to some of my friends about it um and some of the misconceptions there I wonder if other people might have the same things and I just think it's really good so people so people understand so I am not someone who likes to be like please sir some more <laughs> I've never been that kind of person um but I also appreciate that with things like YouTube, the kind of support that like people um want to give you is really important because um particularly with the reaction channel. So I decided I'm gonna go right back from the beginning. So I decided in lockdown, uh, because I um had stumbled across uh, a reaction video to some Harry Potter movies, uh, which was Seb Screen. And I was like, you know what? Like, this is really cool. And I never, re I'd never really watched many reaction videos before. Not really. Never been invested in any, any anyway. Um, but I really liked um, his reactions to them. And obviously, I'd seen the movies before, so it was really cool to kind of like watch him on the journey with them. And obviously, knowing how much I love them and I'm, and kind of seeing him fall in love with them as well, it was like this is really cool. And I liked him. I thought he was funny, and um, this is like a cool guy. So continue watching them um and then i started thinking like i wonder if i could do something like this because i know i can be quite animated <laughs> i can be quite animated um and i know i definitely wear a lot on my face um and i saw and i can't remember who this was now but i remember seeing someone reacting to something it wasn't seb it was someone else reacting to something and you know just the layout of 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 what they had set up and and how they were speaking, I was like, if this person can do a reaction channel, I'm sure that I can give this a go. Um, and I remember reaching out to Seb to be like, I, you know, I know you've probably got like, I mean, now he's, his channel is so huge. Um, and, and it was still big then, but I remember reaching out to him to be like, oh, do you like any tips that you can give me? Or do you think there's something that I could even do? And, and he was so like supportive um and stuff and i'm and i and i still thank him now if you go to my my channel one of the the, the first things you'll see in my about or sections I, i'm thanking him for that because he didn't need, even need to take the time but he did anyway um i was like cool didn't really know what or how this was going to go but i was very much like i'm not telling anyone about this because i just wanted to i just wanted a space to talk about things that i enjoy it's like there wasn't even like a a viewpoint at that point, I, you know, I wanted to do this full time or anything. I just, I just liked the idea of having a space where I can react to stuff that I enjoy, mainly because like, I, I enjoy watching things like Beyonce clips and, and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, ah, oh, this would be really cool to kind of share this with other people um, and other music and stuff. And maybe I can find out some more stuff about other musical artists that I don't already know. Like, you know what, I'm gonna start a channel. And so that's what I did. Um, 
So in that April, um, I watched I, I think like a like a tutorial thing as to how you can go by doing a reaction and how you can even because obviously all I had at this point was my phone and even now I still use my phone. So what I'm recording in right now is my phone. So I don't even have like a digital camera set up for this. This is just my phone. Perhaps the Samsung. <laughs> um, and yeah, like, so if you look at my first reaction, it's very, very different to what my reactions are like now. Hello, 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 wagwan people, then wagwan, wagwan, wagwan. Okay, cool. So this is the first little reaction video that I am putting together. And to say that I don't really know what I'm doing is a little bit of an understatement. Okay. And may I present the person that actually sang the song in the movie, Miss Lauren Allred. Oh, I love her. I'm trying to hold my boy let it stay this way can't let this moment in um in terms of like how it's set up and the audio and it, all that kind of stuff i didn't really have a clue um so what i then learned was that actually you can um you can get the video that you're reacting to um and then using like software you can do like a picture in picture and and so the i can be watching whatever it is i'm watching so i use my tv which is just over here um so i'm watching what i'm watching uh but then i'm recording my reaction to it whilst i'm watching so then when i come to edit now um and then take the video that i've recorded of me on my phone and I take a video of what it was I was watching and then I picture in picture the video I was watching against the the actual screen. I know there's lots of different ones that other people use but that's the one that uh, well it's the one I paid for so that's what I'm using <laughs> um, and it's actually really good I know there's some really like complex ones out there with lots and lots and lots of different features but I was like I don't know if I know all of that so I'm going to just do what I think is going to be comfortable for me um, so that's what I use and um, and in the main, it's cool. Like there, there are there are definite issues with it from time to time, um, but you know it's all good. And actually, initially when I first had um, started my channel, I all I had was my phone. I didn't even I didn't use a laptop at this point um, or a PC or anything like that. So everything was done on my phone, um, and. I cannot tell you how many times I would be doing a video and editing the video and it would crash um, and spending time like waiting for it to buffer and then there'd be issues with the buffering and out of sync and it like such a headache. So when I eventually got a laptop, I was so happy to do that. Um, I remember all of this is being done whilst doing this, well, I've got a full time job. So not only are you learning on the job, like, but you're also having to go to your actual day job uh, and, you know, like, that's your bread and your butter. But if you can imagine, you've got so many, like, luckily, like, from having uh, literally a, f a couple of subscribers. I mean, the first one was my mum, which I always talk about. The first one was my mum. But then that started to grow and it started to grow and grow and grow and grow. And you've got so many, like, requests, like, reaction requests coming through. And you're like, the time that it takes, so I'm going to actually take you through like just me editing one video. So this is just one video and I think it's only like uh, four or five minutes long. I don't think it's that long a video. I'm going to take you through one video anyway to get the video uploaded. Uh, but then once it is uploaded to then actually edit that because I do it all. So it's all me. So the ETA on this is about 40 minutes. So I bring both my reactions, the video I've downloaded into the program. Uh, I edit the colors to make sure that all pops off, edit the audio to make sure that the audio is correct as well. Um, I then make sure that the videos align and that can be a little bit tricky when it comes to music reactions in particular. Uh, once that's aligned and then watch it all the way through to make sure there's no surprises and it's all in sync. Uh, once it gets through to the end of the video, I then edit my review to keep in the bits that I want. Uh, I then add in any text that I might need, any overlays. This was Chinese New Year, um, add those in and then and add in my outro elements, so my actual outro, my outro icons, uh, and then cut and paste an intro into the beginning part of my video. I then add in my logos, add that right through to the end of the video. And then once that's done, I get that ready through for rendering and export that video. Once it's doing that, I'll be editing my thumbnail to get ready for actual YouTube. Um, and then once that's completed, uh, I will then upload this through to Patreon first and then on to YouTube after that. And that's that.
as you can see from that one video, that's taken some time in which to obviously put that together, get that to render. And then once that's rendered, I then have to then upload that to YouTube. And obviously I've got Patreon now as well. So it usually goes to Patreon first and goes to YouTube. Um, once I've done the actual video and once that's rendering, my next step then is to look at the thumbnail. And the thumbnail uh, can also take a little bit of time. And a lot of people might be a lot quicker than me. So, and I'm, off, I'm, I'm constantly trying to figure out quicker ways in which to do certain things. So you'll notice that in my, in my video, there are certain things that are already set up for me just to go. So things like my uh, outro or things like um, uh, my logos and things like that, they're already kind of sized so that when I put them onto the video track, I'm going to like take too much time in fiddling around with it and stuff. Um, but there is still always going to be some fiddling because ultimately like my videos can be different lengths and that kind of thing. So there's always going to be something like that. So then once I've done that and then I've done the thumbnails um, and I put the thumbnails together and it, and it is important to think about, which actually I had a conversation with someone who contacted me recently. Are you sure the, the thumbnails you've got are the most effective? Because, you know, the psychology behind why someone's going to click on your picture as opposed to something else. Um, so, you know, making sure that things aren't too busy or too blurry or um, that, you know, that you that you are clear enough in the, in the thumbnail. I use Canva for that. So using Canva to kind of pull these things together and make these thumbnails. So because I'm already using Canva, I'll usually have a thumbnail that I can kind of just use as a, as a starting point. Um, so I'll go into one of the pictures of me and I'll edit that to bring in a new picture. Um, and that photo, I'll remove the background. I'll then take a, a picture that I've downloaded from the internet um, and start editing that. And as you can see here, it can actually get quite meticulous around the edges of that picture because you'll see a bit later on that if those edges aren't in there, then when you try and do an outline around it, it doesn't quite look right. So you have to kind of get in and get all the kind of detail out that you don't want to kind of create the main focus of the thumbnail that you'd like. So in this instance, it's for Fantasia and her tribute to Tina Turner. Once you've got that image, you can save that image separately, but then you want a background and a background that people can recognize. So I'm removing the Fantasia from the middle of that picture, which leaves a bit of a, a blank space there, but then that can be the background for the thumbnail. So then I go back into Canva and then I replace the previous background with the one I've just made. Um, the two icons you can see there, one is Annie Linux. I replace that with Fantasia I've just made. And then I replace the picture of me with the one I've just created as well. Then I start positioning, well, where do these need to sit exactly? They sit in the best way possible on the thumbnail. Uh, and then reduce that. I bring an outline around it. My outlines always tend to be white. Some pe other people might choose to do different colours. Once I've got... Fantasia in the right position. Uh, I then start put, putting myself in the right position to be like, where does that fit in alignment with, with her? Once I've got me in the right space, I then put the outline around myself as well. Um, change that outline and change the position to kind of just keep jiggling until I'm kind of happy with how that sits as a thumbnail against my logo and with Fantasia's picture. I then edit the, the pictures to make sure they're as bright and as colourful as they need to be with that being, um, you know, luminous. And then once I've got those, I then edit the text as well to make sure the text is right. So aligning that to make sure that they pop in the right way they need to and that the audience gets the information that they need without it being too cluttered. Once I've got that, I then save that as a picture, which I can then upload to YouTube. Knowing me though, I wasn't quite happy with the positioning, so I've just altered that ever so slightly and moved that around ever so slightly um, until at the point I'm happy. And then once that's done, as I said, I can save that and then that can be the thumbnail to upload to YouTube. That is really important as well. And sometimes that can take a bit of time, kind of like, well, you know, getting the picture that you need and like taking an outline of that and putting a shadow on that. And actually, is, does that sit right? Does that sit right? Does that need to be behind? I'm branded with the pictures and the colours that I usually use. Um, so that itself can take about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, if, if I'm being very quick. And that can crash sometimes too as well, which is always, again, frustrating. So you've got quite a lengthy process in terms of editing, and that can just be a short video. You've got a fairly lengthy process when it comes to editing your thumbnails. Uh, then you upload it. So then once you've uploaded it, uh, and you've uploaded it to, uh, and we'll just talk about YouTube for now. So now we're going to take our thumbnail that we've created. This is for a different video. Um, and we're going to add that to our YouTube video. Once that's been added in our YouTube studio, we now need a title 
So the title needs to be exactly what it is, something fairly engaging. It's going to want to make people want to click on it. Um, I don't like clickbait though, so I like to at least be quite clear as to what it is that, going to, that people are going to see. Um, I then start writing in my description box. So um, I've always been shown um, that the description, the first couple of lines of the description should really mirror what's in your title. Uh, so again, try and make that as engaging as possible. Um, but again, for keyword purposes, try and reiterate a little bit as to what's in your video in those first few lines. Um, then a second paragraph that kind of just has a little bit more meat on the bones. Um, again, that's probably the me thing. Um, just to make sure that it doesn't look too empty. You can see in there already that I've got some stuff that's already saved. Um, so when I create a video, it auto-populates with things like my external links, like my TikTok link, my Patreon link. Um, so I'm trying to not leave myself too much in which to actually write out in that box. Uh, I then go and I copy and paste the link to what it is I've reacted to in that box as well. Make sure that the playlists are set up so people can find the content that I've just reacted to. Um, and then I, I look at the tags. You've got up to 500 characters there. And I've always been advised that for SEO purposes to help people find my video, um, you wanna kind of fill that in as much as possible with as many search terms as you think um, will lead to your uh, your reaction video in my case. Uh, so once it's all filled in, I then look at my end screen, try and find the right video to end on. So I'll kind of keep people on my channel and watching more of my content. And uh, once I've saved that, um, I then go into my subtitles. And the subtitles, what YouTube will do is there is a kind of AI generated um, subtitle creator. Um, and actually you can make subtitles for any language um, that you that you think is suitable. So that will change depending on what kind of content I'm reacting to. So a Dimash video will likely have more subtitles on than this one, for example, but there's still 10 to 15 of these um, that you have to manually go into each language, auto-translate, once it's translated, save that and then go into the next one. Um, so it can be quite a laborious process, but obviously it's quite an important one because I want to make sure that everyone can understand what it is I'm saying. Um, I'm hoping one day that YouTube will find a way that you can press a button that it just auto translates all the ones you want from one click of a button. That'd be absolutely amazing. <laughs> YouTube have got a fantastic, very brilliant kind of, I don't know if it's an AI system, but um, it's something that basically checks for copyright, whether it's kind of a video copyright or an audio copyright. So again, this is coming from a perspective of a reactor. So I'm sure there's um, other types of YouTubers that do their original content, but it's, it's they own everything in that video. But obviously when you're reacting, and, and I, I can only speak for me as someone that's a viewer, if I'm watching someone that's reacting to something, like, I kind of want to see what it is they're reacting to. I, I wouldn't want to watch a reaction video that doesn't have the material. Like, don't, I mean, you can do reviews, and I'm sure people do do reviews and stuff, and that's fine. Um, and again, it's not knocking anyone that's doing that. Like, that's great. But that isn't the kind of content that I personally watch myself. So I always try and put myself in the shoes of who I think would be watching me, and I would want to watch what it is that they're watching so I can appreciate where they're reactions are coming from at what points in the film or what points in the music video or what points in the song so that material is so important because ultimately like if, if you can't see what i'm reacting to then you'd, it, it's just me doing like you know doing my reactions to nothing almost so the nature of that means that a lot of this material is is copyrighted and um what you often find is once you upload it the uh, youtube system can pick up pretty much everything <laughs> um, and it'd be like well you you're using content that is copyrighted um so then you've got options as you can see from here this video in particular was blocked and that's due to copyright so everything that you upload youtube ai will check for copyright and you can see here all the different copyrights that this particular upload uh, has flagged you can see here, here the copyright owners all the countries in which your video won't be seen which is pretty much every single one of them in that list. And then I'll show you on the right hand side all the different actions that you can take. So um, if you take the first one, select action, you can either trim out the segment, replace the song, mute the song, or in this case, we're gonna dispute the claim. So we're gonna dispute the claim, and the reason we're gonna dispute that claim is under copyright exceptions such as fair use. Now I'm no legal representative, so please do not take this as legal advice, um, but this is what I use. 
Um, and under that, you can take the drop down box, you can see you've got a reaction video here. Um, and then I've got a proforma that I use um, for all of these, because they're, they're pretty much the same thing really, um, that I then fill in and I copy and paste into this box. Um, and basically what it's saying is, is that I don't intend to use or breach anyone's copyright. Uh, and I'm actually only using the content as is necessary for my reaction to give an honest and fair critique uh, and reaction to what it is I'm seeing, watching or hearing. Once I'm happy with that, as I said, I will then copy and paste that into that description box. Uh, and it gives you up to, I think it's 2,000 characters in which to write something within that. I then click these these three boxes and then it asks you to put your, your full, your name um, within that because the person, the claimant will actually see this. So put your name in that and then you go on and you do the next one and then you do the next one and you do the next one. So this again can be quite a lengthy process because depending on how many different claims, if you're doing an album review, for example, um, you'll have to do a dispute um, action for each one of those. Actually, I'll take you down the rest of my YouTube studio. You can actually see there are um, quite some videos uh, of my uploads here that are ineligible for me to make any money on them at all um, because copyright owners claims their content stands, um, which therefore means that my dispute has been rejected have the option to appeal, but if you appeal and you lose, you then get a copyright strike on your account, uh, and you're only entitled to three before actually your account gets completely terminated and you can't create a new one. Um, so again, you can see here, ineligible, ineligible. Even this one here that's had 25,000 views, um, I can't earn any, anything off that because of the copyright. Again, ineligible, ineligible. And this is just to give people a bit of an insight into what my first year was like within YouTube. So, um, I had 7.8 thousand subscribers and probably earned around about 364 pounds and at 90p within that first year. Um, which when you think about it, isn't a lot, then you probably would make more than that in a month's wage, never mind a year. So it can just go to show you that it can be quite difficult when doing a reaction channel in particular and copyright becomes part of it. You know, this is not at any point like legal advice I'm giving to anyone. It's just my experience with it is, it's a very, very colourful area because there are some things that will, I guess you can dispute, uh, dispute the claim, sorry. Um, and then it takes you to a form where you can put in what are the reasons that you're disputing the claim um, under fair use. Either way though, no matter what it is that I think and whatever it is that I put in that, that form, whoever's, whoever the claimant is, whoever is the person that that um, material is owned by, that copyrighted material is owned by, um, they then get that dispute that I send through to them and then they've got the option to say, right, cool, we agree with your dispute and actually we're going to release this uh, copyright claim um, or they don't agree and they feel their rights still stand and it means that actually um that you are not um you're not eligible to to claim any money from this um regards to kind of monetizing youtube and and getting to the point where youtube can be something that can be uh you know a, a revenue stream for you um when i started youtube there was a minimum of um 1000 subscribers that you needed to get um and a minimum of 4 hours watch time so that's how many people have watched your videos cumulatively uh, within a 12 month period. Once you've hit 1,000 subscribers and you've hit um, uh, 4,000 hours of watch time, you were then eligible to be part of their uh, AdSense program. And AdSense is how Google pay you. So it's how, when, when you see like, which I never understood until I did any of this, um, when you're watching videos and you see certain ads come up, like either in the corner or kind of like halfway through watching something and, and what have you, those ads, like those ads, when those ads are there, that is how, by placing those ads on your on your video, that's how you earn money. And, and once you're part of that program, it's really cool because until that point, you can't earn anything. Um, but the point I'm making is when it comes to copyrighted material is if if your video is due to make any money, you're only gonna make money if you've, if you've got the rights in which to earn that money. So when uh, that dispute goes to that copyright owner, if they don't release that copyright to you and say, actually, you know what, that's fine, we'll release it to you, then you can never earn off that. And the thing is, I never get like salty about it because for me, I'm like, well, originally this is their work, this is their work. So 
you know, they're not, they're not obligated to say, well, no, actually, I don't mind. But my argument would always be, that I feel that reactors, um, they keep conversations about certain things alive. And, and actually, I think, if I was an artist anyway, I'd want people to be talking about, like, my material. Um, and actually, if if this is a good reactor that actually, like, takes the time to really stop and evaluate and feel what it is that that person's put out there, then to me, I would feel no way about releasing that to them because they're, they're adding something to the conversation. Um, but ultimately, that's not always in my in my control to do. So... This is just, again, to explain to anyone who's thinking of going into, especially reaction videos, I think this is a, a, a different uh, type of, 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 of YouTube content than, it, than, say, someone who does skits or someone who, um, you know, does educational seminars or all that kind of stuff. It's, it's different because you, your fundamental lifeblood is reacting and reviewing to things that people have already created that already have the copyright on them. Um, so if you can imagine then, you spend that much time editing the video, you spend that much time uploading the video. Um, what, once you've uploaded it, you've then got the issue of actually that's got copyrighted and I may not earn anything off that video anyway. So that's all for one video, one time. Um, and you've got to think that with all the different requests that come through, there are so many reaction requests to do that. So the point I'm trying to make is when I was doing my full-time job, I very much struggled because I was working for um, quite a, a, a big like company. Um, and it was quite a, a taxing role. And then I've got this, what's starting off to being a hobby, becoming something that actually... I think this is something I could really, really do. I've, I've now entered the AdSense program. Um, and I think this is something that it could be really viable. Um, but the problem you've got is for this to be viable, people are going to need to like want to pay for your content because the AdSense alone isn't going to be enough. Not at the level that you're at. Do you know what I mean? Like, so if you, if this is something that you, that you want to do, I had to make a decision and was like, well, I think this is something that I can grow. But the only way I'm going to be able to do that, so I've I've done this already for eighteen months. I've got it to the point where I'm at like fourteen fourteen thousand subscribers or something, which I was so proud of. I was so incredibly proud of doing that. Um, but then I was also at the point where I was like, well, this isn't that I couldn't I couldn't live off this. Like I I literally couldn't live off this at all. Um, you know this 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 wouldn't come close if I can like without giving too much of my financial situation away, like what I was earning through YouTube probably wasn't even like a 10th, no, not even a 10th, 20th, <laughs> a 20th of what I was making in my job. So I was like, there's no way with all the things, you know, because we've all got financial commitments and things like that. There's no way that I can do this long term. But I was like, listen, if I'm going to make a go of this, like I... And I think that I can, like, I'm going to need to make a decision here because ultimately I cannot keep doing this. I was going to bed at like 4 a.m. in the morning, like trying to edit, trying to record and um, trying to get things uploaded, trying to respond to everybody. Um, and I'm like, I can't keep doing this because ultimately I'm going to give myself a breakdown <laughs> and I'm far too young for that, people. Uh, well, I guess you're never too young for a breakdown. But what I mean is like I, that long term just couldn't continue. Um, and if I'm honest, I didn't enjoy my job. Like, at all. I, I, was, I remember there was one particular moment where I was sat um, in, in, in work having to answer questions about things that I just had no interest in like, and, and I'd, I'd just be keeping it real. And if any of my ex-work colleagues see this video, I rate you guys so much because ultimately it's so good that you do have that interest in those things. I just didn't. Um, and yet I've got people that are messaging me on YouTube and talking about things that I'm avidly interested in um that I can't even get back to because I just I can't I, I haven't got the time it was really difficult so reason that I decided to make a Patreon was a because um I'd seen that Seb had done something similar and that other reactors had done things similar where they had a, a Patreon where people could um I guess support them if they wanted to I think the thing for me that kind of sold it was that well People must be enjoying my content, otherwise I wouldn't have any subscribers. And um, and all the feedback I get from the videos that I do and I'm able to respond to, 
are people that enjoy my content. Like, obviously, I know there's a big part of that where people are enjoying who I'm reacting to. Um, but there are so many people that could potentially react to that, that there has to be an element in there where it's, well, there's, there must be something um, that you're enjoying from me. So, so, yeah, so that's the reason why I decided to make a Patreon. This is the reason why I talk about Super Thanks. It's why I talk about YouTube memberships. Um, and what's really interesting, if you go back to my first videos when I first, when I first started this, when I actually didn't think about doing this full time, I didn't even like to ask people to like and subscribe. She had one of my subscribers tell me, you really need to start asking people to like and subscribe to your content because actually I, I would have forgotten about it. And I was like, yeah, I don't really want to ask people to do that. Like, I just, I just, it, make, it makes me feel like proper cringe. Um, whereas now, I kind of feel like okay to ask for that because I'm like, well, actually, if you did, like, genuinely, that that would help me and and my channel out. Um, and furthermore, if it's content that you enjoy seeing and want to connect with me more and that kind of thing, this is a great way to kind of help me do that because it means that I can continue doing what I'm doing. Um, so I just wanted to kind of put a little bit of that out there, um, and kind of just, you know, let people know what it's like to have a channel, like, and or what it's like, well, what it's been like for me to have a channel. I don't know whether this is everyone's experience and, and it can be really difficult because you look at lots of other people and you see what they're doing with their channel and, you know, their growth and things like that. And you have to, well, I've had to really tell myself to kind of just focus on you. You're wanting this to be successful. You're wanting it to grow. Um, you can't watch other people. You, you really can't because it's just and and there's and there's so many people I subscribe to. Do you know what I mean? And like I said, there's, I still am a Patreon to to other to other other channels and stuff. Because I'm like, actually, if there's a way in which I can support you to do what you're doing, like, and I'm enjoying the content, I will do that. And maybe that's only since I become um someone that's got a channel on YouTube that has become something that I've really thought about. Um, even things like liking things, like I'd watch things like most people do um, and just go on to the next one. Whereas now, if I've liked the content, I will always try much that I like, that I, I, you know, leave a, a like or something like that. I think it's just really important that people know what what this is actually like, for, for especially for newer channels that are starting up. Um, you know, this isn't a case of that, I'm trying to be greedy or I'm already getting paid loads from YouTube because that's just not <laughs> that's just not the case at all. But I will still say though that I can see that the more that this continues to grow, then actually like um those other streams may not be as I say as important, but you know, you get you'll 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 be getting a, a decent revenue, I suppose, from your videos because there, there, there are just so many of them. Once you once you start doing this, you'll start to see that there are certain there are certain things that get certain views, right? There are certain so for me, I know there are certain artists that get more views than other artists get. Um and I could be quite insincere and just decide just to do those. And we're like, I'm not doing anything else because ultimately those things do not they're not financially viable for me. And it still takes me the same amount of time to record those things, to edit those things, to upload those I'm just not doing it. Um but I don't to the point in doing that either because and maybe I'm stupid, <laughs> maybe I'm stupid, but I'm like, that wouldn't be enjoyable for me because ultimately my whole purpose of doing this channel was to look at things that I enjoy, things that I love, and hopefully things that people enjoy and love as well. And I just think doing one thing, or one artist, or one group, or one set of, like, I just don't think that is the kind of variety that I would want to put content out about. Um, so I will continue to take, you know, requests from people from different places and, and I will continue to try and, uh, I guess, please as many um, of my subscribers as I can because, as I said, without my subscribers, I wouldn't have a channel at all. So it's really important to kind of balance those things. Um, I think it's really important to have a goal in mind, like, and, and where you're trying to get to and why. And I think it's really important that you know what it is that you want to make content about because... I knew from the from the very beginning that it was a reaction channel I wanted to do, and I wanted to do a variety of reactions. I wanted to look at anime, I wanted to look at music, I wanted to look at uh, movies, uh, and I wanted to look at TV series as well. Because these are all the things I genuinely love. Like I can tell you now, if these were if these weren't things I genuinely love, I would have stopped doing this channel a long time ago. I promise you that, because. There is so there are so many long nights um, and so many early mornings and um, 
you know, trying to get back to people, people like taking you, your comments the wrong way, um, you know, and trying to balance that, being like, you know, I'm so tired, I'm doing this I can, and now you've got to take it. So there's just so many things in which actually, like, it could be seen as quite difficult, but because I love what I do, like, I genuinely, like, I, I put this camera on and I'm just in my element, talking about things that I love and that I can interact with other people that they love too. Um, and almost, you know, like embodying what other people might be feeling about the thing that I'm watching and the fact that they can relate to that. Like, I love that. Um, I love, like, opening, like, you know, avenues to other people that might not have watched a certain uh, thing before or listened to a certain type of music before. And now they're like, wow. You know, so it, it's it's things like that that give me, like, the biggest joy. And also knowing that, like, I, I can add even, like, 1% of joy or happiness or escapism for someone who might be going through something um and that helps them like that those that to me is purpose and i know for some people it might be like well you know like but i i, I get i that's that's the information the content that i get back from people so that's what i'm doing what i'm doing and i just think it's just really important to be transparent and like i said i don't want i don't i, I really don't want and I, and I saw some comments today that i was like I need to address this, like, just, and, and to make it really, really clear, like, this is not me trying to do, like, a money grab or being this, like, no, you must, pay. like, it's not that at all. This is literally just, I found something that I really enjoy. Um, I feel like people enjoy the content with me too. This is just a, the, the fairest way that I can kind of see of kind of trying to make something financially viable that I can continue to do this, that I can continue to grow, um, and that everyone is happy. Um... And I just hope that makes sense to everybody. And like I said, if there's anyone that's out there thinking about doing a channel, um, then hopefully, like, just my experience with it can kind of just bring a bit of, like, reality to it all. Because, you know, some some, some days are hard. Like, this, this, this is a job. This is not like a, you know, I might put out one video today. Don't have to do one today. Like, you know, it's the consistency. Consistency is so key. And something that I'm still working <laughs> working on, uh, even having taken, even having walked away from my job. Um, so I'm hoping that this year will be a successful year for me. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that, you know, people continue to come on that journey with me as well. Um, and I'm hoping that by me, you know, talking about this and just being like as honest as I can be about it, um, that people can understand why at the end of my videos, I'm like, listen, <laughs> I got to ask, <laughs> I got to ask. Um, and don't think that I'm trying to, um, you know, um, put things behind paywalls to force you to do anything. It's 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 there if you want to. Um, and like I said, you know, I will I'll always upload things to YouTube. Always, 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 always. It just means the people that are on Patreon or on part of my YouTube membership, they will, they will get access to things early the same way that there are there are perks and things of being members of anything that you're a fan of um so yeah i hope that makes sense and hopefully that's helped someone as well um i'd love to know if it has like um or if there's anyone out you know i don't really speak to many other youtubers which um is crazy because when i first joined youtube the, we had like a whole um creative collaborators um thing and stuff and um there were some really cool people that were kind of on my induction i guess like um you would call it and they're really really awesome people um and i hope that they're still their channels are still going now um but yeah like there's any other youtubers out there that are like you know oh I, I've, I've come across those similar kind of struggles or um you know people that have walked away from things like for example one of the things that i thought would be really really easy to do um would be that there would be some companies that i wanted to work with i thought oh sponsorships i see people do sponsorships and stuff um and i know that some people get approached and some people do the approaching um some people go to through companies i found out that they that they will approach companies on your behalf um and I just thought, do you know what? I, I think I can put something together. I think I can put something together. Um, so I chose certain companies that I was like, right, I'm quite passionate about these companies because I, I use these companies and I like what they stand for. Um, and I still haven't heard anything back from them. <laughs> so, you know, my feelings are hurt. <laughs> my feelings are very hurt. Um, but that's yet another kind of like financial dream that I was like, oh, that'd be brilliant to, you know, that, that will help me in order to become like stable enough that I can continue and not have to worry about you know, what's going to happen this month, next month and whatever. And, and that hasn't quite happened. So again, it'd be great to kind of hear from other people who have maybe gone through those kind of things and, um, or 
if they feel as though that they're on that they're on their own. Do you know what I mean? Like I know, you know, the certain ceilings. I'm I'm still like I'm nowhere near where I'd like to be with my channel, and um, but yet still I believe so much i believe so much in what i'm doing and i'm so happy doing what i'm doing um so if there's anyone else out there that's kind of i don't know feeling like they're struggling or anything like that if there's any advice i can give i'm always always happy to help but like i said i'm, I'm not necessarily you know i'm not mr beast <laughs> do you know what i mean so um i can only give the advice that that, that i know about um but I'm always happy to to help if I can and always happy to be an, an ear if I can as well. Um, so yeah, hope that all makes sense. Sorry if this was a long video, um, but hopefully it can help someone. Um, or at least if it doesn't help someone that's gonna, you know, trying to be an aspiring YouTuber, um, that it at least gives people a bit more of uh, uh, an insight into like what this looks like, what goes into this and, um, and therefore why I have something set up like a Patreon. So, yeah, hope that makes sense. Oof, that was a lot. So, yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, again, uh, if you could drop a like and subscribe if it was something that you found of interest and something that was useful, that would be really cool. Um, if there's anything that you took from it, like, again, let me know what that was. Um, but I suppose the last thing I would say, actually, is... Um, it is absolutely okay to make a bold move because I guess the one thing that I that I do know is if this doesn't work for me, and actually this is, not, you know, I, I, I'm i saying this, but I believe that it will. But if it doesn't, like, I'm not going to feel bad that I tried something. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to feel bad at all. Like, this has been such an awesome, awesome thing. Like, and and much more than I thought it would ever have been. Like the people I've connected with, the um the things I've watched, the things that I've seen, like um and just like how that's helped me grow as a person as well. Like I, I feel really grateful for having this space. Um but if this doesn't work then, you know, you try something else. Do you know what I mean? So I'm hoping that like if there is anyone that's watching this that is feeling like mm, I'm just not sure and you know what's everyone else gonna think and, and whatever. Like, don't worry about that. Because as I put in my bio, people are going to judge you whether you do or whether you don't. Do you know what I mean? Like, so you may as well do something that you love and do something that you enjoy. And as long as you're enjoying it and you're being your true, authentic self while you're doing that, like, people will see that. People will see that. And I've got a strong belief that those kind of things just continue to grow on themselves. Um, so I'm hoping that happens and continues. Well, hoping that continues to happen for me. We're all there at the finish line. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, thanks so much for watching with me. I do have super thanks. Uh, I do have my YouTube membership. Uh, and I've also got my Patreon as well. So uh, there's lots of different ways uh, to support the channel if you want to, if you wish to. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>